So welcome back to Bourbon Riders. This is kind of a special show tonight. We want to find out, are you a bottle collector or a whiskey enthusiast? Do you strive to find those next taters or the next great bourbon or whiskey? Let's find out. Okay, I've got a simple test for you to find out. Have somebody that uh, really doesn't know your favorites and tell them to pick what they think is the best bottles off your bar. And then you, they pick those best bottles, uh, let's say five, and you pick what you think is a good alternate for them. All right? And do this three times. And I think after that you'll know. Are you a collector or an enthusiast? And there's nothing wrong with either. I'm a little bit of both, sometimes more than the other, but we're going to talk about five that were selected for me. And a couple of them, I couldn't find alternates, but we're going to talk about that. Some of them, I mean, you know, some of them are just definitely tater bottles. Everybody looks for them, especially when they are new in the bourbon and whiskey uh, uh, journey. And we're going to talk about, well, the first one, the first one's not even on here, which was a uh, um, Colonel E.H. Taylor small batch. It's probably this one right here. This one I thought was a tater until I tasted it and going like, I want more of this. I want backups of this. So at first I thought, well, you got to have this if you have any kind of collection. I was wrong about this. This actually is an enthusiast bottle. I love Colonel E.H. Taylor. It's probably one of my favorite of the uh, Buffalo Trace lineup. But let's talk about other ones that obviously to a lot of people are taters. And first up, that would be obviously Blanton's Single Barrel. Everyone wants to have a Blanton Single Barrel on their shelf. I get that. And when I was chasing this at first, I thought, I'm going to get one of those. Those things are great looking. They're different from anything else on the shelf. You recognize them immediately. And then I started seeing, well, they're not on the shelf, right? And the aftermarket price was stupid. I'm seeing usually $200 and more for a bourbon that should be $70, sub-70. So I stopped chasing them and made relationships with bottle shops and eventually I was able to get. This is actually my first one. I have two. And the reason I have the second one, it wasn't because I was trying to collect all the, spell out the word Blanton's. I actually like it. But I promised myself, I bought this one for $69. The second bottle I bought, the backup, $69. So I was unwilling to pay secondary prices, or even marked up prices for it. I waited, made relationships, and now I have two of them. And is it up on my top shelf? Yeah, because I think it is a top shelf single barrel. They kind of invented the single barrel, didn't they? So I like it. Is it my favorite single barrel? It is not. So you don't want to chase this. You're an enthusiast, not a collector. You don't want to chase this. What would I recommend? Well, that's simple. John J. Bowman. It is also distilled by Buffalo Trace. They then take it up, as I understand, to Virginia, and they distill it again in copper pots and then age it and bottle it. And it's a wonderful single barrel bourbon. It's not a single barrel like store pick. No, you, I see these like in Total Wine, uh, not Total Wine, I'm sorry. Um, I can't think of the name. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. But I don't see these in total one. I see these in places occasionally, but they don't last long. Uh, I don't know necessarily they're allocated other than people don't get that many of them. But it's not like I see it in a reward system. I just see it on the shelf. Sometimes it's limited. They'll say one or two per person. Uh, and if it's two per person, I always get two. John J. Bowman is a fantastic alternate. And typically, I buy this for $60. So even cheaper than the Blantons. And I actually like it better than the Blantons. So I would say on this round here, I'm an enthusiast. So score one for enthusiast. 
I'm not buying any more of those bottles or searching for them and paying secondary prices. And that's kind of a different. If you're a collector, a lot of times to get that collection, you'll pay more than list price because you're out to build a collection. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having tater bottles. I've got a couple of them right on the shelf right now. At Michter's 10, a lot of people consider a tater bottle, but I'm getting ready to do a show with a uh, person that helped me get that, and we're going to open it up and tell you what we think of it. Might not even like it. Well, I take that back. I've tasted samples of it before. I do like it. I think it's a wonderful. It's probably the best Michter's out there. So, uh, but, so that's not really a tater bottle. Uh, that Willet Purple Top, uh, yeah, you could say that's, well, we'll get to that. How about this? The Pappy 12 over here, tater bottle. Why? I ain't opening it till I retire. Tater bottle. If I ever get another one, fine. But I probably won't ever get another one because I got that in a raffle. Paid list price. Still, it's a tater. All right, what next up? Well, a lot of people consider this taters, but if you watched my channel you realize this 13th Colony Double Oaked was no tater. I was one of the first channels that had a review on it, and why was that? Simply by location. It was only released in a few states, Georgia being one of them. I got one right away. I did not pay $199 for it. I did not pay $600 for it. I've actually seen this bottle in a store, not too far away from here, for $699. It's still there collecting dust. Now, uh, it is a very high proof. I'm not a high proof guy, so I have been drinking it. It's half gone. I am an enthusiast. I rated it number one for 2023, best bourbon of the year, uh, because there's just nothing else like it, and that's why. Do I drink it reg regularly? I don't because of the proof, not because of the price. In fact, I will tell you, disclosure, transparency. I had two of those. I traded number two. Why? I traded it for other bottles that I want with a friend in another part of the country for bourbon that I cannot get here. So I traded two bottles for that. He got a great deal, and so did I. So if, uh, if you're an enthusiast and not trying to just collect that for the tater and everyone's searching for the new ones of 2024, yeah, I went on the lottery, didn't win that either. Would I buy it again? I would, but I wouldn't pay one penny over list price because I'm an enthusiast on this. But that being said, now there's nothing quite like the 13th Colony, but if you dilute it down to get to the proof, to me, 100 to 115 in that range there, diluted down with limestone water, you would probably have something very close to this. And what would that be? That would be the Peerless Double Oak. Now, generally, I buy this for... Uh, first one I bought, I think, it was 84. This one was 89. It took a while to get to Georgia, but they're here now. This is a wonderful Double Oak bourbon. It is my favorite. No, I tell you that actually the Lucky 7 Holiday Toast is my favorite. But if I couldn't have the Holiday Toast, I'd be going to this Double Oak all day long. And the Holiday Toast... It's got some flavors a little bit different from the 13th Colony. I tell you that this is probably the closest that I've tasted to the richness and oakiness of the 13th Colony, and it's absolute pleasure, and I got backups of it. So on second round here, I'm an enthusiast because I love a good double oak bourbon, but I'm not paying aftermarket prices for this. And I traded the other one I had, right? So I think I'm pretty good so far. Two enthusiasts, no tater. Well, that's all about to change. Tater. And not your 8- or 10-year tater. Hell no. The 13-year 25th anniversary. Tater, tater, tater. I can't, I can't. This is a Tater. I've always wanted an old Fitzgerald. I've tasted the 8 and 10. I've never tasted the 13. Now I'm going to open it up. I will with a friend, but it's going to be a special occasion. We're going to make it a special show because uh, this, to me, is very special. So 
This one I lose. Collector, tater bottle, all day long. Next one, I lose again. Tater, wild turkey, uh, straight bourbon risky, Whisk, risky. It is risky. It's whiskey. Jimmy Russell's 70th anniversary release, aged eight years. Now I knew a friend that was going up there, and uh, this was gifted to me. In fact, I didn't even buy this one, so I don't even know if that qualifies. But if I was buying it, it would be a tater. Why? Because Jimmy Russell signed it. That's why. You think I'm opening this up anytime soon? Hell no. And it's not because I want to resell it. It's just like, I want a special occasion to open up this Jimmy Russell because, well, it's just special to me. So it's going to remain on that shelf for a long time before I decide to open it up. And in fact, I'm looking for another one. And I think they're going to be here. And they're like, they're like a $50 bottle. I think they're going to be here uh, by the... Uh, uh, late fall, early winter, and you'll be able to buy these. And I'll buy one then, and then I'll do a review of it. But this one still will remain unopened because it's a tater. So now it's tied, isn't it? Two enthusiasts and two taters. And I got five choices, right? So here's the tiebreaker. Am I an enthusiast and collector? And I will tell you that it probably changes with any five. Mostly, I think I'm an enthusiast, but look at what's behind me. I buy bottles to try and share that with you. Most of these bottles are open. Most of these bottles have two to six ounces gone within the first couple of weeks because I'm doing different shows with them. Sometimes just to review, sometimes I'm putting them against something else. But I'm all about tasting new bourbon. That's my thing. Uh, I don't have a huge selection of taters. I don't. I've got a few taters, I admit it. But uh, if even if I could find a Pappy 23 and they said, well, can you afford it? I might be able to. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not filthy rich, but I'm not filthy poor either. I could probably scram, uh, scramble up enough money for a Pappy 23, but I ain't doing it. I've tasted a Pappy 15. I can't imagine... Anything that would be three to five, six thousand dollars. No, I, I just can't. I, I'm not. I don't care. It could be gold lettering. I ain't buying it. Now, if someone wants to gift it to me, I'll give you my address. <laughs> but we're talking about me right now and these five random choices. I need to talk to my wife about these random choices. This one, you're gonna say, I know which this one is. And you'd be wrong. Willet Purple Top. I looked for this bottle forever. Why? Because I never see it anywhere. And when I do see it, they want like $300 for it. And holy shit, what bottle's worth $300? Oh yeah, the Pappy 23, right? Willet Purple Top. Now, why did I want it? Not because it was a black bottle with a pretty purple cap on it. No. Because friends and subscribers started sending me samples. Here's one of them right here. It says, Will it age eight years, Kentucky whiskey, bourbon, whiskey, purple top, 108 proof, the initials DV. You probably know this guy. I do. He's a friend. And I've gotten others. This is a uh, second or third one that I've gotten over the last two years. I just opened this the other day, and so you see I'm saving it, and I'm drinking this before I open this one. Why? Because that just makes sense, doesn't it? So, the Willet is not a tater. I've been wanting this since I first tasted it. I thought it was delicious. I thought it was different. It is the only Willet so far that I really like. You know, I had really bad things to say about the, uh, was it the Johnny Drum? I've changed my mind on it. My palate's changed it a little bit. I like it better. Would I buy the Johnny Drum again? I would not. Will I drink it? I will. It was not one of those ones I did in the bourbon toss. I almost put it in the bourbon toss. But then I, I tried it again the other day, and I was like, yeah, it's not bad. I'll drink it. Uh, I don't know very often, but it's, sometimes it's, it's not going to go bad. I will drink it. 
But this Woolet Purple Top, I loved it from the first minute I tasted it. Thanks to Dave Vogelsang, a lot of my palate is expanded because I got to taste things that not only would I not buy, are in my area. Luckily, I know where I can get this Willet Purple Top for $199. And you're going like, no shit. No, no way, Mike. You want to email me or PM me, I will tell you where. It is in my locale. And in fact, in a week or so after seeing this, you'll know where. So you want to see where you can get these for $199? I'll let you know within one week. Otherwise, email me or private message me and I'll tell you where it is. It's in driving distance of Atlanta. Really not that far away. So, Willet Purple Top was the uh, tiebreaker, wasn't it? I'm an enthusiast. I love this stuff. I just can't afford to have a lot of bottles. I've got this one bottle and when I get through with this, I'm going to start in on this and then um, probably go after a backup. But I decided I'm not going to buy a backup until I actually open it because I know where I can get one at a decent price. Get it less than MSRP. Yeah, MSRP is like, what, $249, something like that. I never see it. Uh, I never act. I, I hardly ever see it for that price. It's usually $300 and I can buy it for $200. Oh, yeah, I sure can. I'll even give you the name of the store manager. You can introduce yourself and say you saw it on our channel. He'll be thrilled. So, the question is, are you a bourbon and whiskey enthusiast or a bottle collector? There's nothing wrong with either one. Just know, in your budget for buying bourbons and whiskeys, if you're a collector, it's going to be expensive. But... You probably aren't buying whiskey every week like I am. I'm buying whiskey every week. No kidding. The doing the show and the try new things. That right there probably tells you I'm more of an enthusiast because a lot of bottles I have, people wouldn't bother. They would throw them at me versus collecting them. <laughs> they really would. Like, that's not that good, Mike. But I get to try new bourbon. One of the reasons I have this show, I get to try new bourbon and share it with you. So we hope you like the show. We didn't drink a drop of whiskey. We got to change that in the next one. So we hope you like the show. You'll comment and share. And please, always, never drink and drive. Please drink responsibly. And uh, if you've got a friend that's got a lot of whiskey, tell them to send you some. Cheers. <laughs>